The following lesson addresses learning outcome two, reading and viewing. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to explore and explain key features of texts and how they contribute to meaning. Learners should be able to describe plot, subplot, character portrayal, conflict and dramatic purpose. Hi there, I'm Nelly Mabazo. Some of you might know me from science, but English, theatre and Shakespeare are some of my great loves and I'll be working with you on these lessons. Drama is a type of literature with a very unusual characteristic. It is written mainly to be performed, not read. It is a presentation of action by actors on a stage before an audience. In this new series, we are going to look specifically at the elements of drama, which is plot, characterization, dialogue, and theme. Whenever you are asked to read a novel or watch a play, you will need to have some understanding of what the plot is all about and how to discuss the plot. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to define the term plot and analyze how a particular plot works in terms of cause and effect. Many learners say that plot is the same as the story of a novel or play, but it is more than this. Plot refers to the events or incidents that make up the action of a story as they are linked by cause and effect. This means that one incident develops out of another or adds to another. This builds up a feeling of excitement and tension in the audience. So, the plot of a play is designed to have a particular effect on the audience, to make them laugh or cry or feel afraid. The story is structured in such a way that the plot reaches a climax, a crisis or moment of decision. Shakespeare's plays are divided into five acts. The climax usually occurs near the end of the third act. Another way that we can present the structure of a plot is in a simple diagram like this. Here you can see that the plot is shown as a simple triangle. A, B and C. The exposition or explanation is at the bottom left-hand side. The rising action comes after the opening explanations. Here it is shown by the line A, B. The climax is right here at the top. And after the climax, we have the falling action right here. And then of course, Finally, the conclusion, which is right here at the bottom. Now, let's get down to some action. We'll examine a retelling of one of the plots of a Shakespearean play. Here's a prose outline of the main plot of Twelfth Night. You will find it full of twists and turns. Twelfth Night is a comedy set in the imaginary country of Illyria. The main plot involves three people in a love triangle. The Lady Olivia is a young, rich, noble woman. She is in mourning for the death of her brother and has vowed to mourn for seven whole years. Orsino, the governor of Illyria, has fallen deeply in love with her, but unfortunately, Olivia doesn't feel the same about him. One night, there's a terrible shipwreck on the coast of Illyria. Viola and her identical twin brother, Sebastian, are washed up separately and each one thinks the other has drowned. Viola is brought to shore in a boat and decides to disguise herself as a boy with the name Cesario. She joins the household of Duke Orsino as a messenger. Orsino 
tell Cesario, who remember is actually Viola disguised as a man, that he is in love with Olivia and sends Cesario to deliver his love messages to Olivia, much to the unhappiness of Cesario, who has fallen in love with Orsino. Olivia, in turn, falls in love with Cesario. Sebastian and Antonio, the captain of the ship which has rescued Sebastian, now arrive in Illyria. Then, things get even more confusing. Sir Andrew, who is also in love with Lady Olivia, sees Cesario and Lady Olivia together, and he challenges Cesario to a duel, a sword fight. Antonio, the captain, rescues Cesario because he thinks Cesario is Sebastian. At that moment, Antonio is arrested for an old offense and asks Cesario for a purse of money which he has given to Sebastian. Cesario says she doesn't know what he's talking about and Antonio is dragged off to prison. Lady Olivia meets Sebastian and thinks he is Cesario. She invites him to her home and marries him immediately. Now things are getting really complicated. Orsino visits Olivia and Antonio, who is brought before him, says that Cesario is Sebastian, a young man he rescued from the sea. Olivia then says that Cesario is her husband. The Duke, deeply wounded, is saying goodbye to Olivia and the disloyal boy Cesario when the arrival of the true Sebastian clears up the confusion. The Duke, having lost Olivia and realizing how much Viola loves him, turns his affection to her and they are married. Let's see if you can remember the basic plot. Here I have 12 sentences about the events of the play all jumbled up. Let's see if we can unscramble them and put them in the right order. Remember to look for what happens and why it happens, what is the cause and what is the effect. To make it a bit easier, let's look at the parts of the plot that come before the climax. The sentences are, Olivia falls in love with Cesario. And our second sentence, Olivia refuses to see Orsino, and so he decides to use Cesario, who is actually Viola, as a go-between. Our third sentence tells us, Viola finds herself alone in a strange land, and so she decides to disguise herself as a boy. And our final sentence, Sir Andrew sees the page boy, Cesario, favored above himself, and challenges the boy to a duel. Can we put these sentences in the correct order? Where does the story start? Yes, with the shipwreck and the separation of the twins, Viola and Sebastian. Can you see which sentence begins the story? Yes, here it is. Viola finds herself alone in a strange land and so she decides to disguise herself as a boy. Where does she go? Do you remember? To Orsino, and he can find a use for her. What? He can use her to deliver love messages to Lady Olivia, who does not want to have anything to do with him. Let's find the sentence that tells us that. Olivia refuses to see Orsino, and so he decides to use Cesario, who is actually Viola, as a go-between. But here comes the first unexpected turn. What is it? Olivia falls in love with Cesario. This, in turn, causes a further problem in her household because Sir Andrew is visiting and he has declared his suit to Olivia. How will he feel seeing her favor a page boy? Sir Andrew sees the page boy, Cesario, favored above himself and challenges the boy to a duel. Well, those are the first four parts in the plot of Twelfth Night. Now, 
the scene has been set, the main characters have been introduced, and the challenge of the duel hints at the climax that is soon to follow. Let's look at the next few sentences that we are going to organize. Antonio is arrested for an old offense and needs money. Our second sentence tells us that Olivia meets Sebastian and persuades him to marry her immediately. Our third sentence reads like this. He asks for the purse he gave to Sebastian, but Cesario says he doesn't know anything about it. And our final sentence tells us, Antonio comes upon the duel and thinking Cesario Viola is Sebastian, he intervenes and saves Cesario. Remember that in order to determine the plot, you are looking for both what happens and the reason why things happen, the cause and effect. We've just learned that Olivia falls in love with Cesario, but in the meantime, Olivia mistakes Sebastian for Cesario. Let us find the sentence that tells us what she does. Olivia meets Sebastian and persuades him to marry her immediately. While Olivia is getting married, Cesario is fighting a duel. But she isn't any good. What will happen next? Antonio comes upon the duel and thinking Cesario Viola is Sebastian, he intervenes and saves Cesario. But what happens immediately? Antonio is arrested for an old offense and needs money. So what does he do? He asks for the purse he gave to Sebastian, but Cesario says he does not know anything about it. We've now had the climax of the play, and it is time for the various issues to be resolved. Let's have a look at the next group of sentences. Sebastian arrives, both twins are seen together, and all the confusion is ended. Meanwhile, our second sentence tells us, Antonio is brought before Orsino, bitter at how the young man he saved pretends he has never heard of him. Our third sentence tells us, Olivia claims the young man as her husband, but Cesario denies that he has ever married Olivia. And our final sentence, Orsino is deeply wounded by the treacherous behavior of Cesario. Well, in the climax, Antonio asks for his purse and isn't given it. So what happens to him? Poor man, he has no friend and no money. He's taken to prison. And then Antonio is brought before Orsino, bitter at how the young man he saved pretends he has never heard of him. Imagine Cesario's confusion. But her confusion becomes distress when the next event takes place. Olivia claims the young man as her husband, but Cesario denies that he ever married Olivia. Who now is going to get hurt? Remember, we are looking at events and the results that they lead to. Orsino is deeply wounded by the treacherous behavior of Cesario. It all looks a mess, but Shakespeare is about to unknot the whole tangle. Here's the final point of the plot. Sebastian arrives, both twins are seen together, and all the confusion is ended. This wasn't a memory test. The aim of putting these events in a specific order was to show you that events in the plot have results that affect subsequent events. Try the following to test your knowledge and understanding. Write your own definition of the term plot. Make sure you really understand what is meant by the plot of a play or a novel or a short story. Remember, plot refers to the same technique for various literary forms. Your second task is to decide on the order of the following two sentences so that you create two different plots. The first one is, the father shouted, the children screamed. Your first plot must show a father who frightens his children. 
Your second plot should show a father who calls for help. In what order can you put sentences to show the different plots? Here are the sentences again. The father shouted. The children screamed. By now you'll have a good grasp of plot and be able to discuss the plot of a play. In the next section, you will be able to show how well you can apply the skills you have learned here. From me, goodbye.